Okay, so thank you so much for uh, coming to our talk today. Um, I'm Daniel, and I'm going to be presenting with Stephanie and Hector, and our talk is on Yes, We Can Notate, Problem Solving <laughs> Journals, and the Standards for Mathematical Practice. Next slide. My next slide here is a little work, though. Okay, so one question that we were considering as we were thinking about our topic is what do students do when they encounter unfamiliar or complex problems? Um, we often tell students to stick with it, but um, what can we tell them besides just like squeeze your brain really hard and hope an answer comes out because that doesn't really work that well. In fact, uh, it leads, oh, next slide please. It leads to um, students often engaged and ourselves too in some of these unskillful responses to challenge, either guessing or just some sort of like asystematic or disorganized engagement or um, merely waiting for an answer. So we wanted to think about how we could help students develop specific problem solving strategies and ways of thinking about mathematical problems. Next slide, please. Um, when we brainstormed what some more skillful responses would be, we realized that these are basically the standards for mathematical practice. And so we wanted to investigate those more deeply. Next slide. So in general, um, what we found, what we want to share with you guys today is that when students identify the standards for mathematical practice in their own and others' work, they begin to deploy them systematically, they come to see themselves as skillful, adventurous, and invested in their work, and they become more sophisticated learners um, in general. And you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to explore this is not because this is something that we're experts on in our own classrooms, but rather this is an idea that we wanted to take some time over the summer to begin to develop so that over the course of the school year, we can implement it and learn a lot more about how to do it expertly. So one of the consequences of that, though, is that some of the student work you'll be seeing is not from our own classrooms, but rather from the high school students at PCMI this year. Uh, next slide. OK, as we worked, we wanted to um, connect our thinking up with research and the PCMI bets. Um, so one important research finding is that students are more likely to employ specific metacognitive strategies when teachers intentionally incorporate them into instruction. So when you talk about this stuff in your classroom in the right way, it actually works. Students will do it, and research uh, supports that. Next slide, please. Um, more than that, metacognitive training seems to have uh, an especially positive effect on lower achieving students. Um, so this was exciting for us as we thought more about equity and opening up our classroom and the math in our classrooms to every student. Um, next slide, please. And finally, um, as you can see, this YAC is participating in some structured journaling, <laughs> which is one of several effective ways to um, help students develop metacognitive strategies and to bring this training into your classroom. So I'm going to turn it over to Hector now, who's going to talk a little bit about the student work. Uh, so basically, this breaks down into two steps, one of which you guys should, or I'm pretty sure we're all doing, where students are spending uh, time working on rich problems. Um, the thing that we are focusing on, though, is giving those students pause for that metacognitive review where they go back and look through their work for maybe that day or that week um, and to explain and label where they're exhibiting those standards for mathematical practice. Uh, no, we're only going to start with three SMPs for the year, but as the year goes on, we might add more or switch them over. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> so here's an example of student work um, from the high school students, as you can see. They're very neat, organized. Um, not all students are like this, but from our sample, a lot of work looks like this. Um, so they might look back a few weeks later and might not know what's happening. So one thing that they might put on their slides next is something like this. Um, I'm trying to look for patterns, and they labeled it with the SMP7, which is look for a use of discretion. 
<coughs> uh, next please. Um, so these annotations uh, encourage them to be neat, organized, and, and so on, so that they can have that record for later use. Uh, next slide, please. Here's another example from the same student. Um, later on in the problem, next. They annotate that they modeled with mathematics, so they use symbols to represent different uh, widths and heights and try to figure out a more general case. They also start to draw graphs, so this allows students to see where they left off so that when they pick it up later, they can continue their conjecture. Uh, next slide, please. And, yeah, like I just said, next. I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie. Okay, so in order to roll this out, we created some student-facing materials, um, first involving some instructions in student-friendly language, and then some worked examples which students can then practice their annotations. So this is um, the first page where they have the instructions. And you'll see that we asked them to take a few moments just to look at their notebook page, their journal, math journal work from that day, um, and see if they notice any interesting or any like salient spots where they use the math practice. And so, uh, as Hector mentioned, we used three, we started with three SMPs just to break it down because there's a lot going on with all of those. Um, and we decided on the third SMP, which is constructing viable arguments. Um, there is a piece of that SMP that involves critiquing the reasoning of others, but we decided to cut that out for now and um, that's something to think about implementing later because right now this is just an individual journaling activity. Um, the second one is SMP4, which is modeling with mathematics, involving uh, symbols, tables, equations, where are they using these in their problem solving? And then the third is looking for structure, so where are students seeing patterns? We thought these three were pretty high leverage and common SMPs that you might encounter in most problem solving processes, at, at least in the middle school level. Uh, and so then we asked students just to really hone in on a specific part of their work, so if it's like a section of their page, as you saw from Hector's, the, the examples Hector went over, that was not a full notebook page, it was just a section, and then they can um, annotate and explain why it serves as evidence for their, for one of those math practices. And by the way, we call it um, math practices for student-facing um, text, just because standards for mathematical practices is very long. Okay. Okay, so then this is the work example. Um, we asked students to imagine that the blue is the work that they've already done for a lesson that day, and the problem was to figure out the tenth figure in the block pattern. Um, so students will take a moment to look, okay, imagine if this were myself, where am I seeing um, my use of structure, where did I model, where did I provide an argument? So um, there's space in our student materials to write your, the example annotations, and something that um, we would hope students would notice is next, that uh, they use structure, the structure of the block pattern increasing by four. Um, they can annotate it. Um, our vision is to annotate it in a separate color pen so there are no ones our annotations. Next. And then using creating their own table to model that pattern and see it in a more numerical way. And finally, next, um, the argument. So the argument is slightly different um, in that it's an opportunity for students to build on any assumptions they made in their original final conclusion to the problem. So you'll see here that um, it just says the 10th figure has 41 blocks because of the table. Uh, but there's an assumption embedded in that, well, where do they get the adding four blocks every time? And so the argument in here in the red shows that you, know, you can elaborate on that, that you got the plus four from the original block pattern. So we're pushing students to really, um, really refine their argument and uh, make sure that evidence is concrete and thorough. Next. Okay, so because this is something that we are rolling out in our classrooms this year, we have a lot of open questions. Um, I mentioned that we took out the peer critique part in the argument SMP. Um, so we're wondering how eventually we can involve this as a peer process of helping each other see, helping students see each other's work um, and the strengths that they exhibit. Also, um, how can we use journaling to potentially support their developing of positive math identities? Um, this activity we hope is allowing students to identify their own competencies, which we hope will create a positive, um, positive affect towards math as well as a positive culture. 
And also, because this, um, we're thinking more at the middle school level, um, open question about how can we roll this out in high school, what kinds, what levels of scaffolding are necessary um, in order for students to think metacognitively about their work. Next. And so if you're interested or have questions or suggestions for how we can roll this out, um, we just put Daniel's email in there because it's the shortest. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that's that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, next up we have